So hi everyone, welcome to another video of Ground Zero. As the title suggests, we are going to talk about Bernoulli's equation in this video. This Bernoulli's theorem is very important or I would say one of the most important topic for gate examination, engineering service examination and other <coughs> technical competitive examination for civil and mechanical students. So today, we will be talking about specifically Bernoulli's equation. I will tell you how Bernoulli's equation is derived, how Bernoulli's equation's application we use in daily life and also I will tell you that how Bernoulli's equation is applicable when an aeroplane is flying. So let me begin with the basic introduction of Bernoulli's theorem. Bernoulli's theorem is having the principle of Conservation of energy. Three, two, one, zero. So it says that the energy remains conserved when you see from one point to another point a flow taking place. There are multiple approaches to understand Bernoulli's theorem, but we will be using the very basic and as you all know it as the Newton's second law or the law of net force. Guys, when a fluid is flowing, there are various uh, type of forces which are acting on it like gravity forces, pressure forces, turbulence forces, viscosity, forces due to compressibility, due to co uh, surface tension. So these are different different type of forces which are acting on the uh, flowing fluid. Now, if we consider the force which is due to gravity, pressure force, viscous force, force due to turbulence and force due to compression, then all the forces together basically gives you the net force and this net force should be equal to the mass into the acceleration in the same direction of the net force. But out of all of them, gravity, pressure, viscous, turbulence and compressibility, if we neglect the force due to compressibility, we will be left with only force due to gravity, pressure, viscous and turbulence. And these forces together will give us the Reynolds equation of motion. But we are not interested in Reynolds equation. But it should be known to you if they ask you an examination then you should be able to answer it so the question they may ask you is which forces are involved in getting the Reynolds equation of motion so the answer is very simple the gravity force the pressure force viscous and turbulence and not just force due to compressibility if you also neglect the force due to turbulence then we will be left with force due to gravity pressure and viscosity and these three forces all together will give you a very famous equation in fluid mechanics and that is Navier-Stokes equation. Further, if you again remove or neglect force due to compressibility, turbulence, viscosity, we will be left with just two forces. One will be the gravity force and other will be the force due to pressure. These two forces together combinedly give us the Euler equation of motion. Yes, this is that force for which we are talking about all the forces because Euler equation is the mother equation for getting the Bernoulli's equation. So let's see how we can derive the Bernoulli's equation or let's first see how we can derive or how we can apply Euler equation along a streamline. Let's consider the streamline and let's take a cylindrical element along this streamline something like this. Now on this cylinder we need to consider two forces which will be help us to find out the Euler equation and those two forces are force due to pressure or you can say pressure force and second is the gravitational force. So there will be a pressure force that must be acting on the cross-sectional area of the cylinder. And always remember pressure force acts always toward the surface and normal to it. That is why from below you are getting P into dA where P represents pressure and dA represents the cross-sectional area of the cylinder. 
and if you go ds distance away or you can say the length of the cylinder is ds you will notice that the pressure will be more and it will be p plus dp into da whether it will be more or less that is uh, that will actually be accommodated as we will do the calculation number two is your gravity force now gravity force will always act uh, downward and that to exact downward direction okay so that's the reason why we are getting uh, you you know what is the weight right m into g but instead of m you can also write density into volume because density is equals to mass upon volume right so mass will be density into volume so density into volume of the cylinder is ds into da and there is g also right so rho g da ds that is your final you can say the gravitational force acting exactly downwards right and as you can see that this force is actually inclined by angle theta so we will be needing a component a cos component of rho g da ds so that we can find out the force in the direction of streamline because that's what the direction we are interested right now okay so let's apply the uh, newton's second law on this diagram so what we will be getting is pda going upward right minus p plus dpda so these forces were there minus as i have told you rho g da ds cos theta because the force was inclined by angle theta should be equals to rho da ds into a that is the net force into acceleration all right so here let's understand the thing over here is if you simplify the whole equation you will be getting the expression as minus dp da minus rho g da cos theta and it is going to be equals to rho da ds dv by dt now here the thing is here we are just uh, taking v as velocity along the streamline and if we open the acceleration component there will be two type of acceleration here one will be convective and second will be temporal but here we will take an assumption and that assumption will be the flow is steady in nature and since the flow is steady in this equation all those components which are changing with respect to time are going to be neglected are going to be taken as zero right so del v by del t basically will become zero and eventually dp by rho plus v dv plus g dz equals to zero will be your final equation of Euler's equation of motion not just that now we have to actually integrate this equation and when we integrate the same equation eventually we will get what we will be getting p by rho g plus v square by 2g plus z is equals to c but remember this entire calculation is being done along a single streamline so this constant value is going to be different for all the streamlines and if we are going to find out the constant value of every streamline then it is going to take lot and lot of time so that is the reason why there will be an another assumption that we are going to take and that assumption is we will be considering the flow to be irrotational in nature once we take this assumption all the streamline starts acting similarly and in that case you can say the c value the constant value for all the streamline will also become equal and in that case p by rho g plus v square by 2g plus z is equal to constant will become the uh, most you can say exact value to represent the Bernoulli's equation along all the streamline or you can say along a flow so in this Bernoulli's equation you can see there are three terms which are p by rho g z and v square by 2g this p by rho g is called as pressure head z is called as datum or potential head and v square by 2g is called as kinetic head head here just represents the energy per unit weight so we are basically representing the energy in terms of meter or you can say in terms of head but there is one basic thing that you may have noticed till now that we are saying that total energy is constant but we live in a real world and in the real world the energy always loses there should be there should be a loss that we have to consider when a 
when a flow is taking place from one point to the other point in a let's say for example a pipe yes that is the reason why we also consider a loss so when you apply equation along two sections in a pipe then definitely there has to be a loss that we have to consider between two points and the energy at section one will be equals to energy at section two plus the loss loss had to be considered here in this uh, in this particular equation okay apart from this now let's see how the bernoulli's equation helps the aeroplane to fly as you can see in an aeroplane the wings are adjustable the pilot makes sure that while taking off or landing let's take the case of take off right now while taking off the pilot adjusts the wing in such a way that the velocity of the air which is passing or which is flowing above the wing should be more than the velocity of the air which is blowing or passing below the wing so the velocity above the wing will be more and velocity below the wing will be less and as you see the bernoulli's equation you will see that if the velocity on left hand side will increase and the velocity on the right hand side will decrease and we have to make sure that these energies are equal to each other because that is what said by bernoulli's so in that case the pressure has to be reduced above the uh, wing of the aeroplane and pressure has to be increased below the wing of the aeroplane so as you all know always always everything wants to go from the higher pressure to the lower pressure and that is the reason why aeroplane starts lifting up in case of takeoff and in case of landing we do the vice versa of the same thing so this was the basic bernoulli's equation and we have discussed about the derivation also we have also talked about the basic application there are some more practical application where we use bernoulli's equations such as in flow measurement devices like uh, orifice meter venturi meter and also like pitot static tube so these all are the practical uh, we can say the measurement tools where bernoulli's equation is being utilized and in day to day life we can see the usage of them to find out either the discharge or the flow rate inside the pipe or the velocity at any section inside the pipe i hope this video has given you a good perspective and knowledge about bernoulli's theorem if you want more such videos do not forget to subscribe this channel and hit the like button if you really like the content and you get knowledgeable after watching this video share it with your all friends and let's meet in another video till then take care of yourself and take care of your family have a nice day